Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Well, this is Michael Traven's RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your No Bow, No Boundaries 16.7 travel trailer. Got a big cool old trailer here. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use it, get the best out of your campsite. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. First and foremost, I want you to take into consideration your slide. See how much room you need for that to come in and out, unimpeded, preferably nothing hanging over top of it. Then I want you to think about where your water and power connections are going to be. Your water for city water is going to be on your off camp side, toward the front, or on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Same thing with your power, but it's going to be all the way at the rear. So park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, we're going to level your unit. After unhooking your hitch, I recommend getting a stick on level, find the middle of your unit, put it on there and hand crank up and down your unit. Simply raise or lower your unit with this hand crank. Once you get unit level, you're gonna stabilize it. Corners of your unit, you have these scissor stabilizing jacks, a three quarter inch socket here. Put that in there and crank these down. Now I do recommend as I run these down, leveling jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris and hot black top in the summer going to better distribute the weight and just a really good investment so put your jack pads down and just run these down until they're taunt as soon as you start to receive any type of pressure here go ahead and stop because remember these are stabilizing jacks not leveling jacks all we want to do with them is stabilize the unit run both your front ones down come to the back and run your rear ones down got our unit level and stable we can hook up our power now 30 amp cord on the back here. The way these new ones go on. It goes in at a little angle here. Once it's in, twist it to the right and then put on your black washer locket. 30 amp service, should you need. There is a 30 to 110 adapter if you need to plug in at home. Got our power hooked up, let's hook our water. Come up here to your city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Use this whenever putting water into your city water connect. Hook that up, hook your hose on, but don't turn our hose on yet. Go right here to the left of your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point is making sure we return our drain plug. You may have left it out from last time you were camping. Plumber's tape recommended, not putty. Put that in there nice and tight. Then you can go ahead and turn on your hot water, or turn on your water once your hose has been running for a little while go inside open up your hot water tap it's not going to come out hot yet but once water is coming out of there you know your hot water heater is full and you can turn it on from inside there is an on off electric element right here only turn that on here as well as indoors if you're hooked up to 110 otherwise just hook it up turn it on indoors your uh reset buttons if these hot water heater doesn't seem to be working come out and check these bubbles and push them back in that's a reset button and your pressure release valve. Let's say we're going to go camping and we're not going to use city water. We're going to use potable water. Well, just above your city water connect is your potable water tank. Simply fill this up with a hose. Two ways to tell when it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here. Or two on the inside with your pressure fresh water button. That'll tell you when the tank is full. Just remember, when using potable water is when you go on and turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when using city water. It's already pressurized. 
All right, we're all set up to camp. Let's uh, walk you around the rest of the unit and show you a few other things. Again, your hot water heater. Potable water, city water. It's a fresh water drain back there in the middle. And then your other low point drain. Wastewater holding tank. That's where you dump your sewage when we leave. This is a furnace heat release. If you're running your furnace, steer clear of that. That'll get rather warm. Your slide mechanism. Your gray tank dump. You have an outdoor shower. Cable and satellite and your power. Spare tire. Recommend you get a cover for that. Coming up your ladder. Check your seams. Make sure those haven't wiggled loose over time. This is a vent for your microwave. And that's your backup camera. Around your campsite, this is prepped for solar. You hook a solar panel up here and it'll trickle charge your batteries. An outdoor porch light. It's also prepped for TV. Plug in out here. Black tank flush, we'll talk about that when leaving the campsite. And your big pass through storage. From over here is a quick connect LP. Your LP tank. That's a regulator and your power. Uh, check your battery post, make sure those have a wiggle loose over time. Another little docking light here. That will turn it on at. And a cover for your propane tanks. That about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look inside your unit. I've already opened your slide. Normally you wouldn't wait till you got there to open it. First thing I like to point out when I come inside is where the fire extinguisher is. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Just you're ready to come in. Here's your slide control, a couple USB ports for your exterior lighting and your interior lighting. There's a Bluetooth speaker that can be purchased that can set in here. Your TV, turn it on real quick. What I want to mention about your TV, we have it strapped in for travel. There's a little button here next to your cable. Make sure that green button's on before you scan for digital channels. That'll allow you to pick up more channels. You plug in your 110 with GFCI reset. There's your TV off and the scanning channels. Down here on the floor is your breaker box and fuse box. You got a variety there. 7.5, some 15s, a 30, and a 40. I highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. Now this is how you want this to be when you travel. Put your slide out, keep your table and your cushions up here. And then simply when you arrive, I'll show you, you do have storage underneath these Velcro. When you arrive, simply set these on here. Flip them over, them are Velcroed as well. And then, We'll grab your table and set it up in the middle here. It's tend to open easier from upside down. And just that quick, you have your seating and dining area. Come back here in the hallway, lighting for your Shower and bath. You have a hand crank open exhaust up here. Be sure that's closed for travel. Door closed. So I've that light. Here's your furnace. Let's turn your air on. Air cranked on. We'll shut the air off. You'll notice that the air will go off rather quickly. And then the furnace will come on. Furnace kicked on. Shut the furnace off. Now the furnace blower will take a couple minutes to shut off. Over here is where you check your, your levels of everything. Your brand new battery, your fresh water tank. That's where I said you can hold this button in until when your potable water is full. And your black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water heater. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. All the way down here on the floor, 12 volt carbon monoxide detector. The reason I mention this 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're going to be gone for the day, nothing charging your battery up, 
Disconnect your battery to keep this from running your battery down. Smoke alarm, AC unit with quick dump, your sleeping area. Come over here to your fridge. Dometic fridge. Turn it on right here. Right now it's hooked up to electric. Or you hook it up to gas, the gas is off. Or you hook it up to battery. Shut it off right here. Change your temperature levels over here. Self-explanatory microwave. Do you have some individual lighting over here by your stove? And there's your Bluetooth speaker. That sits right up in there. You will have to hand light this with a long lighter. Simply turn it to light, to light. Put accent lighting here. Lots of storage, I just want to mention underneath here. Keep an eye on your plumbing. Uh, just as you would at home, maintain your plumbing. You are bouncing a house down the road and you don't want things to come loose over time. Now let's have a light and fan here. Let's act like we're gonna be leaving and close the unit up. There's a handle to pull on the side of your table, pull that and it'll fold right down. You can also, as you see, when you put your table down you can make another sleeping quarters. But for travel, We'll put the cushions on your bed. Your table upside down on your bed. And then we can bring our slide in. Make sure all your doors are closed down here. All your cabinetry is closed. Nothing to impede this slide from coming in. You see it comes in rather quickly. And we're in. Shut off our interior lights. And we can go around and see which other lights we need to individually shut off. So I can accent light up in here. I know where that's at. So coming out of the unit now, I want you to make sure your exterior door is all the way open before lifting these steps up. When you lift them up, pull on this handle and lock that in there. Close your exterior door, lock and deadbolt your door. Unhook our water, unhook our cable. Come over to your low point drains, fusing potable water. Get up underneath there and do your low point drain back there. If you're hooked up to city, open up both of those. Come to your hot water heater. Open up this pressure release valve. Leave that open. That's going to drain your hot water. Once that's done, make sure you close this back down. And then you can pull your drain plug. Remember, we're dealing with hot water. Be careful. Cup our hitch and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, you got two dumps on this. Hook up our sewage hose. I would start up here. Sewer outlet connection, pull that handle. Now once it sounds like this is no longer draining, we're gonna again take our water pressure regulator. We're gonna come over to our black tank flush. We're gonna leave our black handle open Hook up the hose and turn that on for a good five minutes. That's gonna wash out your black tank, get all that nastiness out of there. After about five minutes, go ahead and shut that hose off. Close your black handle. Unhook your hose. And come back here and hook up again. This time we'll pull our galley tank. Now we do have bigger, stronger, longer sewage hoses with Ys or Ts. So you can hook up both these at the same time. Just remember to pull the front first, and then come back and pull the gray tank. That's gonna be your cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers. That's gonna clean your sewage hose out for you. Then you can conveniently 
Come to your bumper and store your sewage hose right in there. Head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. We hope you enjoy this snowboat for many years to come. Happy camping.